about 30% of the total housing population in the state. About 5,335 classrooms were destroyed in 512 schools, primary schools, 38 secondary schools, and indeed two higher institutions in the state. The governor identifies corruption, illiteracy, and drug abuse as some of the factors propelling insurgency as he proffers solution on how to curb the menace. Because we want to address the root causes of the insurgency, which are not limited to endemic poverty, pervasive illiteracy, poor social and economic outcome, poor social, in poor in social inequalities, drug abuse, climate change, environmental degradation, among others. And therefore, in order to address the root causes of the insurgency, we must create jobs. The lecture, which is part of the requirement for participants at the National Defense College, is aimed at knowledge sharing with a view to addressing the nation's security challenges. The motorists making U-turns have a sense that something is brewing that will delay their travel plans. But for others without inclination, they are left with no choice but to endure a roadblock by angry residents who have a bone to pick with the police. Cementing the position with logs, the protesters display placards of disapproval against the crime that has left residents of Jire community in Adamawa State with sleepless nights. Kidnapping. And they are bent on staying put, not minding attempts to convince them that all is well. And we ensure they are charged to court today, unfailingly. But that is not the major reason for their outcry. The issue with the police is the question of trust over the handling of the arrest of some suspected kidnappers. We arrested some suspects, but unfortunately, when they were taken to the police station, they were released. They said they got an order from the above. So what we want is, we want them to come back, then they face the law. One of them categorically confessed that he's a kidnapper. He not mentioned his associate, which we followed and traced them. We caught some, some are at large. So very unfortunate to hear yesterday in the evening that an order from the above that the DPO should release the suspected uh, uh, kidnappers without any, without any condition. Was there such a thing as an order from above instructing the release of the suspects? The Commissioner of Police explained that the problem is due to a misunderstanding of intentions which will be resolved. I allow the DPO to carry out preliminary investigation because when DPOs are handling sensitive matters, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't uh, uh, hasten them to transfer to state CID. You allow them to interrogate the suspect at their own level. Maybe through interrogation, more revelation will come up. So when I've given the DPO enough time to carry out the preliminary investigation, yesterday evening. I instructed him to now transfer the suspect to stay CID for continued investigation and then for the suspect to be charged to court. Residents say they will hold the police to their word that the suspects will face the full wrath of the law, making this matter one that will be keenly watched to ensure that nothing is swept under the carpet. Well, we'll be talking about the border closure later, but at this moment, we'd like to uh, focus on the kidnapped school children and a number of other issues that have um, come up as a result of that over the years. Uh, you remember that just yesterday, the president uh, was making some statements uh, in, uh, at, uh, in Ethiopia about the, the release of the children what he said is that he is going to make sure that the children are free we'll get back to get to that you know in a short while but we want you to uh, join us as we discuss this conversation we have with us here in the studio a humanitarian worker doris iaro thank you very much for joining us thank you for having me and we also have uh, chibok parents in our studio 
in Abuja, Manasseh Allen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Let's uh, begin with you, um, madam. How far so far? Regarding the girls? Yes, regarding the whole campaign and all of that. Well, a lot of promises, a lot of lip services, and girls are still in captivity. So um, the, most of the parents have lost hope. They no longer have confidence again in the government. What, in your opinion, do you think is the inhibition? Well, my opinion is that uh, we are insensitive to issues. That's true. And we are playing politics with the lives of innocent children. When you say we are playing politics, uh, uh, before you, you actually clear the air on that, I mean, this is something we've heard a lot, the fact that I mean, people say there's a lot of politics at play. And, you know, from the understanding of politics that people have is the fact that, you know, policies are made, perhaps policies on how to, you know, rescue, kidnap victims and, and all that. So when you say politics, do you mean the right type of politics or which politics do you mean? Oh, well, I... I, I, I cannot really say which is which, but it is politics. Because these are people, they don't know what is happening. Their children were just kidnapped without no raising, and other government promised to bring out their children. They have not. This government promised that within three months, when they win election, the girls will be out. Well, they have tried. Half of the girls are out. Well, half of the girls, about 100 plus, they are still in captivity, so we don't understand. I'm, I'm a little confused because when I hear of all the things that the federal government has been doing in the fight against insecurity, uh, whittling down the influence of Boko Haram, and that according to the, uh, the commander of Operation Lafayette, they said not an inch of any territory in Nigeria is under the captivity of Boko Haram, then my mind, in my mind I'm asking the question, where then are the girls? I don't know where the girls are, but they are in captivities. We don't know where they are, but they are still in the hands of their captives, their does, captors. Does that mean they are not in Nigeria? I, I, I don't know. I don't know, but we cannot see the girls, and we want the girls out. And if we say that, uh, uh, talking about the, uh, that uh, the insurgency will be ended, every day people are being killed, people are being kidnapped. Okay. In the rural areas, people are being attacked. So we don't understand this. Everybody is, we are confused and we don't know the reason. So, and we don't have the power, we don't have the weapons, we don't have the access to all this. But I believe the government has access, they have the power, they have the weapon to solve this problem. There are elected representatives of all of these localities that you talked about. Um, you said that when you, when you say people do not feel safe, which areas are you talking about? In the Northeast, for instance, now uh, uh, I'm from Southern Borno. Southern Borno comprises Chibok, uh, Bu area, Goza, and other area. Uh, just uh, December, during the Christmas, people were attacked in Bu. In Chibok area too, during Christmas, people were attacked. And even last week, yesterday, I was called by one of the mothers in one of the interior village, in the village that you cannot access by vehicle. They have been attacked, and nobody hears that. Nobody knows that. Despite all of the military presence that we hear? That yeah, they... the military presence are, are there, but not into the hamlets, mm. the interior, where the real villagers are. There are no military, there are no security measures by the government. It's only the local people provide this uh, embanga or stuff, and they have to like rally down to pay a certain amount of money to protect their, themselves. And the, it is not enough, because these people just come from nowhere with sophisticated weapons. And these villagers, they have maybe, uh, what do you call it, nice 
an axe, that's all what they have. But these people come with different kinds of weapons mm. and they cannot protect themselves. So many of them are now displaced. They have left their villages, they are now scattered all over. So yeah. we don't understand this thing, it's getting worrisome. So in, in other words, while we are expecting the people, parents are expecting that their children will be brought home, more people are being kidnapped, is that what you're saying? Of course. So many parents now, I even spoke with some yesterday, their daughters are in captivities, their houses burnt, their husbands killed. Like one of them, Monica, her daughter is still in captivity. She lost her husband, her house got burned. One of the daughter, because of trauma, she has gone insane. The other one, Hanetu, her daughter is still in captivity. Her son was shot, her house burnt. And a lot of uh, tragedy. And nobody knows, nobody hears, but these people are crying, they are suffering. There are farms, like uh, November, December, it was a time of harvest. These women will suffer. To, 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 to go to farm, but at the end, their produce will be cut away or be set on fire. And these are people that they don't enjoy any facility from the government. Well, they are just striving to see they help themselves, but they are being molested without no cause. Mm -hmm. It's so sad. Let, let's go to Abuja and, and, and bring in uh, Mr. Manasseh uh, into this discussion. Now, you, you've listened to our guest in Lagos, and I'm sure you have your own side uh, of this story. I mean, it's been years since that kidnap in, in Chibok, and we understand that you've had some interface with the government. Is there anything new so far? Um, th uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, let me say this. Uh, during the inauguration of President Muhammadu Buhari, that was May 29, 2015, he said in that speech that the war on terror will not be said to have been completely done without the rescue of the Chibok girls and all other Nigerians that were in captivity. Today, five years down, we have about... 112 Chibok girls are still missing. We have many others that were abducted before and after the Chibok girls. And let me say this, between December 26th of 2019 to today, not less than 300 people were abducted between Bama and Goza, between Buratai and Damatru, and between Damatru and, and, and Maiduguri. And again, we are talking about um, a, a, a resurgence or increase in uh, what has not been taken care of before. Since the, the rescue of the Chibok girls and all the promises that the government you know, made to us, I want us to know that till today, there was no any direct interface between the office of the president or office of the vice president or the Ministry of Women Affairs that have the, the, the Chubok girls' decks domiciled in with the Chubok parents, none whatsoever. And again, uh, we are seeing a lot of, uh, of attacks going on. In the last attack of 2026, 20, more than 56 people were taken. And in Mandira Grau, where uh, other people are, uh, uh, from Chubok are, are, are residing, we, we issued a statement about two weeks ago indicating the list and the detail of people that were abducted. And nobody is saying anything. Nobody has said anything to any of the parents, even after reporting how many died amongst them from uh, heart-related problems, high blood pressure, of waiting for their daughters. And now we've gone beyond that. If you happen to talk to some of the Chubok girls that were, were rescued, they will tell you that at some point, when they hear any of the uh, military aircraft, Air Force uh, uh, fighter jets coming across them, 
while the insurgents were running away, they, they will prefer to run out. It's better for the bombs to be dropped upon them to die than to remain with these captors. But then we have a, 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 a sitting president that promised to us on the, 20, on, on the 6th of, of July, we visited him, that's 2015, and he made several promises. He even promised to set up a committee to investigate again the detail about uh, what, what, what happened in, in Chibok. Nothing happened since then. February 24th, 2016, we visited the president again. He promised nothing happened till today. What we are saying is, if there are no territories under Boko Haram, where are the Chibok girls being kept? Where are the other people that are being abducted? Where are they taken to? And these are the questions that we don't have answers to. So when Doris talked about uh, we are playing politics with this thing, I think this is what she might mean. We, we had the military talk to us several. They said uh, 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 technically defeated uh, terrorism, completely defeated. Uh, the terrorists have been reduced to non-fighting force. Uh, they have been uh, uh, degraded with, with no capacity to attack, uh, to, to attack hard target, only soft target. They have been pushed to the um, uh, uh, islands of Lake Chad. Then I asked this question severally on, 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 on my various platform. The attack in Auno, the attack in, 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 in Goza of 26 that claim about 56 lives, the attack in, 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 in Mandragrao, the attack in Korangulim, are these villages on the islands of Lake Chad? No. These are parts of southern Borno. They are not even part of northern Borno. We are not even talking about the green belts of Kalabalge. We are not talking about the Mandara Mountains. We are not talking about the core Sambisa that they have said severally that they have taken over Sambisa. They have turned it to, 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 to shooting range for, for, for military. They have, you know, they, have, they, they want to turn it to a, a, a training facility. Mr. Allen, All these perhaps are in the core southern Borno. Uh, Mr. Allen, perhaps this is uh, a statement that you probably have come across a statement from the president. He made this in Ethiopia, uh, saying that let me categorically reassure you of the steadfast commitment of the Nigerian government to ensure the freedom of all kidnapped children from the shackles of Boko Haram. We will not relent until every child, boy, girl, every Nigerian adult in custody of Boko Haram is freed. Now, that's a statement uh, the president made, perhaps the latest, you know, in the string of statements which you have referred to. But, you know, one thing that we have heard a lot is the fact that, you know, from the army, from the government, from people that are on the fields, they say that, you know what, the fight against terrorism is complex. So from where you sit, just how complex is that? Um, uh, I, 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 I want to ask, we, we, we know that the Northeast is, is a region with a specified uh, geographical location that we all know. And I argued this out at some point when the chief of Army, uh, air, air, air staff uh, uh, was making presentation when, when, when myself, uh, Aisha Yusufu and Obi Ezekwesili and uh, uh, Ibrahim Morocco were, were, were invited by the Air Force to go on, on, on a tour of Sambisa. And Somebody, they, they made a presentation and they said Sambisa Forest was about, Sambisa general area, they call it general area, was about 60,000 square uh, uh, kilometers. And I queried that. I said, which geography is that? How large is Nigeria? 90, 90, I think 93 or 91 plus thousand square kilometers. So how do we have Sambisa to be 60,000 square kilometers? Which was a big lie, one. Another thing is, um, we are talking about the size of, we are, uh, uh, terrorists are disturbing us. And we talked about the numerical strength of our military. Are we waiting for somebody to increase the numerical strength of, of our military for us? Or any other uh, agency of our armed forces? We know the challenges. We know the asymmetrical nature of this warfare by Boko Haram. We know that this is unconventional war. They know this and we know this. And it is not a rocket science for us to know that we need a lot of improved intelligence, improved intelligence gathering and intelligence sharing. We need increased 
numerical strength of our armed forces to cover this area. What has been done in that regard? And again, if we are talking about uh, 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 the president said this, the president promised, how many promises has the president made between 2015 and today, 2020? We can, we, we've lost count of it. And if, if there was a promise, what action followed the promise? I have not seen any. And again, if the, the military keep telling us that they are doing their best, and truly they have been doing their best, but again, their best is not best enough. We've, we have friends, we have classmates, we have uh, uh, fathers and, and, and relations that are part of this war. We interface with them daily. If I check my phone, I receive messages from friends at the war front that will tell you their frustration. So what are we waiting for? There is no monopoly of intelligence as to who we need in this fight against terrorism. We need everybody. And we, as end fillers of this unfortunate incident, we are tired, we've been helping, we've been contributing, we've been suggesting. Since from the, the, the word go, before the abduction in Chubok, if there was an intelligence four hours before the abduction of the Chubok girls, and with, 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 with the police, with the military, and every other security agency on ground, the abduction, the attack still happened, the abduction still happened. And it right, happens also if, if on I may the come attack in now, of... If, if I may come in now, just, just to clear the air, Nigeria's landmass uh, is just uh, over 900,000 square kilometer, not 90,000, uh, as you said. But, you know, uh, let's, let's take a look, especially now that the president is talking about, you know, his commitment to ensuring that all those kidnapped are free. Let's just run you through some of the prominent uh, kidnappings in the country. Just to be clear, there have been several others, but these are some of the prominent ones. And it takes us back to 2014, uh, the, the very infamous, if I may say, uh, Chibok kidnap, where girls were kidnapped from uh, Chibok in Borno State. 276 of them were kidnapped in April 2014. And this was done by Boko Haram. And at this point, uh, over 100 of them still remain missing. Just to put this in context, and you move to February 2018, another infamous one. This also took a lot of people by surprise. 110 schoolgirls in Dapchi, Yoba State, were also kidnapped by Boko Haram. Uh, at this point, Leah Sharibo uh, still remains missing or in captivity. Uh, Six female students in Kakao Daji in Kano State in abducted by right. gunmen in Kaduna. Uh, abducted and, of course, gratifying to know that all of them have been released. And um, in the same Kaduna, 10 students in Guagwada uh, abducted by gunmen all have been released. The UNICEF has this figure out there that between 2013 and now, more than a thousand children have been abducted by Boko Haram from the northeast of Nigeria. These figures are not unknown to you, uh, madam. They are not unknown to the world, as it were. And you said the other time that uh, people are playing politics. Do you have any idea who in particular may be playing this politics or who are not doing things that you expect that you know, people would expect them to do? Well, I cannot pinpoint someone and say this person is playing politics. But my brother, when you look at the situation of things, you can see clearly that politics is being played and the lives of people are being just taken as if they are not human beings. But you know, and, and forgive me. Uh, we have heard stories of security personnel in the line of fire. Some of them have also been killed by Boko Haram. Um, soldiers on the front line, the military, as, as we have heard, doing all they can, um, even engaging the Air Force to do some of the bombardments and all of that. And I also mentioned the other time that we have elected representatives. Would we say then that it's these elected representatives that are playing politics? or the, the military who are already on the front line? One of the reasons that a common man 
especially in the Northeast, elected uh, APC, is these two girls. They promise us that if they are elected into government, within three months, these girls will be released. And within a few months, the issue of insurgency will be history. And that was the condition. And everybody tore his card for other party and joined. So that our girls will be released, so that there will be sanity, so that there will be peace and security in our nation. And our Excellency, the President, we know him as a man of integrity, and he's an elder statesman, and he is a father, a grandfather. And we expected, as a father, as a grandfather, he would, he would do his best. He's doing his best, but we need him to do more. And we need him to go down and check what is the root of this problem. Because it's just a day. People were just having normal life. These people came, started killing, started kidnapping people, started destruction. We don't know the reason. But they, God has given them that authority. God has given them this privilege. So they should look into this because it's getting out of hand. So both the military, both the people in power, both the religious uh, leaders, both the community leaders, and everybody, we have to wake up. Because we are living on time bomb. Now is, is Borno, is the Northeast. Who knows? And people are being migrated. Young people, they don't go to school again. They are running in thousands into southwest, into west, into east. Who knows? We, we, we will take a break in a short while, but we also understand from you know, the, one of the reports that we brought to you before we came on air that uh, the government has recently released some 1,000 plus uh, members of Boko Haram who they said have repented. And that's been going on. We understand that the military does that from time to time. Is that comforting to you? Is that? Is it comforting that you know some people, some of them repent and uh, they're released back in it's, society? It's not comforting to me. Yes, they are being, re they are released and they are, they are repentant. But what agenda do they have? And what agenda do the government have for them? It's not just to release them and leave them, because some of them are being indoctrinated. They are being empowered financially, and now they are out. What is the government empowering them with? When you say uh, empowered financially, who is empowering them financially? We don't know, but most of, but, uh, most of the people that we came across them, I came across one, Mohammed, that he was, he said he was a member, and he was given millions of naira to do what he was doing. But now he has repented, and he left. We don't even know where he is right now. <laughs> Well, so we, we, we don't know who is giving, giving them this fund. But they are being empowered. But now our own, I'm, I'm sorry to say the government, okay, our country, we are not empowering the youth. Thousands of youth are there. We will come, we'll come back to this particular point that you have raised in a moment when we come back from this break. Do stay with us. This is Nuku village in Abaji area council of the federal capital territory. It's about one hour, 20 minutes drive from the city center. The people of this town are not wealthy, but in recent times, they have been attacked by armed robbers and kidnappers. The most recent attack occurred on the 3rd of January, 2020. This is the house that the kidnappers are drawn to. We are made to understand that this is the second time in five months that it has been attacked. It belongs to a retired civil servant, Mr. Omar Anyinu, whose wife and daughter were abducted. Iko Anyinu is his son. 
He narrowly escaped the attack and tells us that he was the target of the abduction. The first time my dad was kidnapped, I think they said they came for the pensions and the, the activity that was uh, given to him. I woke up that early morning and uh, though I, I had some discouragement, some people, were, my, co my colleagues, even some of my family members were like, why shouldn't I just wait till the uh, following Monday, it's Friday, work is not going to be serious. So I just took my bag, I told my mom about it. Towards evening then, I had the call that my dad, and I mean, my dad has been shot, my mom had been kidnapped and my sister. So that's how I managed to escape. While Iko was absent, his cousin was home when the kidnapper struck. It was about 10.30, so when we had slept, later on when I heard a sound, someone was not hitting our door. So on peeping through the window, we saw some gunsmen who bounced into the door, they hit the door and they opened up the door. And they shot our dad and they took my sister and that of my mom. Can we carry our bikes? They were not with anything, they were using their legs. They walked towards the bush. Inside the house, we find Mr. Anyinu with a bandaged arm where he was shot by the kidnappers. His family says he is still traumatized and due to his high blood pressure, is unable to speak to us. We are also shown some bullet marks around the house and traces of blood. The villagers say they are afraid for their lives. We don't know their plan again because they have once come here before and this is the second time. They took the dad before and the second, this is the second time they now come and took the mom and the, their last daughter. And everybody is wondering now, even to go inside and sleep is a case for us. Ikun Ayinu tells me that his family has been asked by the villagers to move out because they fear that a structure like this in such a poor neighborhood attracts robbers and kidnappers. Is that that is not possible because this house was built by his father with his pension. He's hopeful that the police can guarantee the safety of his family and that of the villagers. When we visited the police area command in Abaji, we were told that the case had been transferred to the FCT Police Command. Investigation is ongoing. In a telephone conversation, the FCT Police PRO and Juguri Manza says investigation is ongoing and no amount has been communicated as ransom for the kidnappers yet. Terry Ikumi, Channels Television News. We're still talking about what the federal government has said, especially the president said, on the kidnapped children and how that they will all be freed. But just to let you know that the traffic situation is, uh, has gotten worse, so to speak, the traffic, according to information reaching us, is at standstill on Lagos and Expressway following a crash that occurred at Kara Construction Area. A fully loaded truck lost control, crossing the entire road, both inward and outward. Our men are on ground trying to pull it off the road without much success due to the load it's carrying. Effort on to transload and put it off for your necessary information. Alternative routes are advised. I don't know how anyone can get out in any alternative routes. And by our men, not, not men of channels. No, 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 no. Men Please. of the Federal Road federal Safety, safety Corps, Corps, definitely. definitely. Well, we still have um, Madam here with us. Uh, well, maybe just to also let you know that part of the speech that the president gave while he was in Ethiopia, he listed six grave violations against children in armed conflict. I uh, listed a killing and maiming of children, recruitment or use of children as soldiers, sexual violence against children, abduction of children, attacks against schools or hospitals, and denial of humanitarian access for children. These are things that he said, and he said it at a, at a, at a forum where they were talking about these things as it concerns children. Mr. Allen, um, when you... Uh, said the other time that um, no one is saying anything one can understand you know your displeasure at the pace the very slow pace so to speak at which things are happening now with all the new promises that are being made do you see any action on ground yes we asked madam here in the studio about the presence of the military you also told us that you were taking on tour of some of the areas where uh, the federal government through the military are doing some activity do you see 
enough being done, one, two, what else do you expect them to do without beyond just the rhetoric of uh, political will? Uh, in all the six points uh, you've just uh, listed, there is nothing that is new from 2015. These are the same points we've been emphasizing at the level of Bring Back Our Girls and all other uh, 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 NGOs that we've assembled for the advocacy. Nothing new in all these points listed. They have been happening from si since 2015, 2014 till today. And these are the points we've been calling government to, 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 to ensure that these are tackled. In all these promises, I, I, I am taking it with a, a, a pinch of salt, absolutely, because uh, I have seen these promises coming in virtually at every given opportunity to speak by the presidency. Every now and then we've had these promises. And none of these promises has ever matched, you know, with, 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 with concrete and palpable action. I have not seen. Because if, if a president speaks, I am expecting that there will be a commensurate uh, a measure of action by uh, uh, the relevant agencies of government to at least deliver, deploy and deliver so that we can see palpable and measurable indicators of success in uh, 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 all the points listed. But I have not seen that because if pe people are still getting abducted even today. Auno was just attacked Sunday evening and till this moment, the, the security agencies, the government of Borno, and the uh, 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 Kondiga or, uh, uh, or Kaga local government cannot give us the exact number of people missing or the exact number of people killed. Where military were saying 20, uh, the Borno state government is saying 30, go and meet people on ground looking for their loved one. It will be more than that. So well, nothing um, is changing. Mr. When Allen, Doris talked about politics, these are the type of policies we are talking about. So because just before we, we wind down on this conversation, Mr. Allen, uh, just before we wind down, uh, a few solutions have been given in recent times from the National Assembly you know, to political parties, religious organizations, even social cultural organizations. We've had solutions put at the table uh, of the government. But for you, looking at those solutions, which would you say should be key moving forward? Because, I mean, we want this end. We want an end to the fight against terrorism in the country. So which of the solutions uh, would you be proposing to the government at this point? No country, no country will win war on terror with, with insincerity. So the first line of action for the government, for the security agency, and any other person is sincerity of purpose. We must deploy sincerity in our action, in everything we do to ensure that there are truth in communication. There are factual and, and, and verifiable uh, 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 basis for any communication between every uh, 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 level of, 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 of government. With that, with, with absolute sincerity, I am very, very sure that we will get results in what we are doing. And again, whenever something happens, let there be consequences of, for every action. But if there are a lackadaisical attitude in, 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 in handling issue of security, there are lies in communication, there are insincerity in dealing with, 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 with um, uh, 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 events on the ground, then we are going nowhere. So I must ask and I will demand that the government, starting from President Buhari, deals with this issue from absolute point of sincerity. In just lastly from you now, what is the mind, what's the mood of the parents? Just give us an idea of how the parents uh, whose children are still not at home with them, give us a picture of what's going on with them now and what do they really want? I mean, it's almost like say, stating the obvious, but just give us a, a, a glimpse of what, what the mind uh, of these parents are, what's the state of health and all of that. What the parent wants is closure on this matter. If the girls are dead, the government should be able to communicate to the parents by name 
that these ones are dead. If the, the, children, the girls are alive, then the government should be able to bring them back because these girls are on Nigerian soil. They are on Nigerian soil, I repeat, because two weeks ago, a lady was rescued and she said she met the Chibo girls in Sambisa. And we still have people talking about no uh, 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 a territory is under Boko Haram control. Why we still have roads, federal roads that are closed from, from use because Boko Haram have stopped us from using our roads. And again, I met two weeks ago, I met a lady that just escaped in this January from captivity. She was telling me she stayed for four years in captivity and at night they could see the street light from my degree. That's to tell you how close they are. <coughs> so is that not a territory? Is that not a place where they are being kept? So the well, parents want their girls back. Closure. And okay. uh, uh, oh, closure on this matter. The parents are not good. They are not healthy. They are sick. 17 of them are dead already, you know, as I said earlier, and they are tired of waiting, and the government has said nothing for them. No. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Allen. So, madam, what would be your final appeal? We, uh, again, let me go back to the fact that we have elected representatives of these parents and these children in the National Assembly, House of Representatives, Senate, and even the Houses of Assembly. Has there been any overtures to them? Are they representing these people well? Do, do, do they know what these parents are going through? Do they give audience to these parents? Most of the times, the parents will organize themselves to go and see them. They will not even listen to them. They won't be able to see them. They don't know what these parents are going through. Their health is deteriorating. They are being traumatized. They are in depression. They are shadow of themselves. Some of them are living corpses. You understand? And nobody is going there. People will just go to, to the urban area and just do a, 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 a show. But those in the interior who go to see them, they don't have even transport money to come out. Even to Meduguri, they are there, dying, suffering. So we want them to go and see these people. We want them to release these girls. We want them to bring security so that these people that are fainting for themselves, they are peasant farmers. They are fainting for themselves, but they are still being fought. Their children are being kidnapped. Their children are being killed. So we want them to stop this thing, to bring it to an end. Okay. And then also, there should, we should stop all these sentimental things that we are doing. Sentiment in tribal sentiment and religious sentiment is one of the problems that has to be solved. If it is not solved, the problem of Northeast and even Nigeria will continue to escalate. Hmm. Religious sentiment and tribal sentiment, it has to be dealt with. Okay. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a fairly good place to, to leave it now. Well, we know that the president has renewed his commitment to free these girls. Let's just hope that, just as you have said, and Mr. Allen also has said, that something decisive would be done and then we'll get some results. We have to thank you very much. Uh, Doris Yaro is a humanitarian worker and founder at Gabasawa Women and Children Empowerment Initiative, as well as Manasse Allen, a parent from Chibok. Thank you so much for being a part of this conversation. We're back in a moment for another conversation. Please stay with us.